Welcome to Explosive Enterprises, and today we're going back to basics with how exactly a gas blowback airsoft gun actually works. Having a good understanding of what each part does can help with diagnosing issues, picking appropriate upgrades, and avoiding the suboptimal practices and outright myths that saturate the sport. The nice thing is that virtually every modern gas blowback gun works fundamentally the same way with only minor variations, so the content we'll cover today can be broadly applied to nearly any gas blowback. Let's start with the magazine. A gas blowback magazine is comprised of a BB feed track on the front and a gas reservoir with valves on the back. On some magazines, these are inserts that slide into an outer shell. On some, the feed track is part of the shell, while the gas reservoir is an insert. And on others, the feed track and reservoir are cast or machined as part of the body of the mag, and these are all functionally equivalent. The feed track itself is most commonly a double stack or zigzag design that narrows the single stack at the feed lips. Feed lips keep the BBs from coming out the top while allowing the BBs to push out the front to feed. To load BBs, some form of speed loader is ideal, although the exact speed loaders that will work depend on the magazines, so you'll need to do some research to find the right ones. All magazines can be loaded through the front with the right adapter, but with open front magazines you can usually pull down the follower and load BBs through the wider channel near the bottom. Some magazines will also permit loading from the top, including any magazines that are double stacked for the entire feed track. The power source for most modern airsoft guns is green gas, which is typically nothing more than propane without the odorant and with silicone oil added. The oil tends to be more detrimental than helpful, as we covered in our gas blowback maintenance guide, and while you can buy oil-free green gas, if you live in the US, it's more economical to simply buy hardware store propane and use a fill adapter. Either way, a bottle of propellant contains both liquid and gas, holding equilibrium at what is termed vapor pressure. When the tank is vented and the pressure starts to drop, some of that liquid expands into gas until it reaches vapor pressure again. This allows the bottle, or the magazine we're going to fill it with, to in theory maintain constant pressure until all the liquid is gone. In practice, it's a little more complicated than that because changing from liquid to gas causes it to cool down, and vapor pressure heavily depends on temperature, but given equal temperature, a magazine that's nearly full and one that's nearly empty will have the same internal pressure. In the reservoir, a fill valve is used to fill it with propellant. These are usually positioned either on the underside of the mag or the spine. To fill, it is necessary to hold the tank above the magazine so that the liquid that settles to the bottom is what's being transferred and pressed down onto the fill valve. On most mags, you'll hear a small hiss and can just fill until the noise stops. On magazines with two-way valves, notably Tokyo Marui magazines, the valve will constantly spit out some gaseous propane while filling, as it replaces gaseous propane in the mag with liquid propane from the can, and when it starts spewing clouds of liquid, then it's full. On the back of the magazine, there's an output valve, which when struck, releases gas up through the rubber gas router. This router is what seals against the internals of the gun and channels the gas into it. Note that because the liquid propane settles to the bottom and the valve assembly is on the top, this will release gaseous propane into the gun. However, tilting the magazine sideways or upside down can result in liquid propane being released instead, and this is bad. The last mechanical function of most magazines is a stop on empty mechanism. This is either a protrusion built into the follower, or a lever mechanism that gets pushed up by the follower when it reaches the top of the feed track. This lever interacts with the gun, which we'll show later. That's the basics for how magazines work, so let's move to the gun, and we'll start with the fire control group. There are a ton of variations on exactly how these work, but they all have the same basic sets of inputs and outputs. There's a hammer or striker that gets reset when the gun is cycled, and when released, it presses forwards on a valve knocker which holds the main valve on the magazine open. This causes the magazine to release gas out the top until either the valve knocker gets reset by the blowback cycle, or the magazine runs out of gas. On most guns, there's an additional valve knocker lock which keeps the valve knocker forwards and releasing gas until it is tripped later in the blowback cycle. This makes the gun consume a little more gas per shot, but it increases felt recoil and allows the gun to fully cycle at lower pressure than it would otherwise. Some guns omit this mechanism, so resetting the hammer immediately retracts the valve knocker and cuts the flow of gas. Even looking at a completely different platform, we see the same basic functions. Pulling the trigger releases the hammer, which pushes the valve knocker forwards, and then the valve knocker resets either when the hammer is reset or the valve knocker lock is tripped. Everything else going on in these trigger packs is just fire control for handling semi-auto or full-auto, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. 
One last detail to note is that on most guns, the valve knocker can pivot upwards so that a magazine can be inserted while the valve knocker is forwards without causing it to release gas. So the hammer falls and we have gas erupting from the magazine's gas router. Now what? Onto the nozzle, which is sealed against the magazine when this process starts. Every nozzle has two functions during blowback. First, there's a valve on the inside called a rocket valve or floating valve, which controls how much gas is released forwards to propel the BB. Gas is allowed to flow past or through the rocket valve, depending on the design, and as pressure starts to build behind it, it pushes forwards against a spring until it seals off the front of the nozzle. Once the nozzle is fully sealed, pressure can really start to build, and the nozzle begins its second function, which is acting as a piston to push back the carrier or slide. Now there are two different styles of nozzle. On rifles, the nozzle usually rides inside a simple channel in the bolt carrier and is sealed by an o-ring around the base of the nozzle. On pistols, the nozzle usually goes on the outside of a piston head attached to the slide. Different designs, but the same purpose and general function. Either way, as pressure builds inside the nozzle, it starts to push on the carrier or slide and force it to retract, first recocking the hammer and then proceeding to travel backwards. Note that gas pressure is keeping the nozzle forwards during this process, sealed against the magazine, and the gas is typically cut off fairly quickly, using residual pressure to drive the remainder of the process. When the carrier or slide hits the limit of its travel, it yanks the nozzle with it, which now no longer sealed against the magazine, immediately starts to depressurize. As the carrier or slide continues to move purely on inertia, pressure in the nozzle rapidly drops as gas vents out the aperture on the underside, and on virtually all designs, a spring is also pulling or pushing the nozzle back into the carrier or slide. The carrier or slide continues its cycle until it hits the limit of its travel, and then the recoil spring pushes it forwards again. On the forward stroke, a few new things happen. First, when the nozzle hits the next BB in the magazine, it pushes it forwards, out of the feed lips, onto the feed ramp, and into the hop unit. As well, the carrier or slide will interact with the fire control group. Again, there's a lot of variety in how fire control systems work, but again, they have the same set of inputs and outputs. Generally, there are two ways that semi-auto fire control is handled. On most semi-only guns, like pistols, pulling the trigger releases the hammer, and then the slide first trips a disconnector, which disengages the trigger from the hammer mechanism. The slide can now reset the hammer and it will catch, and when the trigger is released, it resets into a position where it can interact with the hammer again. On most select fire guns like rifles, pulling the trigger drops the hammer, which then gets reset by the carrier and is grabbed by a disconnector. When the trigger is released, the hammer drops off the disconnector and onto the trigger sear and is ready to fire again. In full auto, the disconnector is disabled. The hammer is now controlled by just the trigger and an auto sear, which releases the hammer when it is tripped by the bolt carrier reaching its fully forward position. Note that some rifles, like ARs, disable the auto sear when in semi-auto mode, while others use it as an in-battery safety to ensure that the hammer cannot drop regardless of fire mode unless the carrier is all the way in battery. When the gun is out of ammo, the stop on empty system on the magazine pushes up on either the slide catch on a pistol or the bolt catch on a rifle, which holds back the slider carrier. Guns whose real counterparts don't lock open on empty may use a slightly different mechanism that either prevents the hammer from falling or physically prevents the valve knocker from contacting the magazine's output valve, but this is the more common way it's done. So here's the full process for a typical pistol. The trigger is pulled, the hammer drops and pushes a valve knocker, gas is released into the nozzle and goes out the front to propel the BB, the rocket valve seals, pressure builds inside the nozzle, it pushes back the slide, the slide trips the disconnector, then resets the hammer, then trips the valve knocker release. It continues on inertia. The nozzle gets yanked out of the hop unit and retracts. The slide hits the limit of its travel, and then the recoil spring pushes it forwards to reset. Release the trigger and it resets, ready to fire again. When out of ammo, the stop on empty system pushes up on the slide stop, and it locks back the slide. For a slightly different pistol, trigger is pulled, Hammer drops and pushes the valve knocker. Gas is released into the nozzle and goes out the front to propel the BB. The rocket valve seals. Pressure builds inside the nozzle. It pushes back the slide. The slide trips the disconnector, then resets the hammer, which resets the valve knocker because this gun doesn't use a valve knocker lock. The slide continues on inertia. The nozzle gets yanked out of the hop unit and retracts. The slide hits the limit of its travel, and then the recoil spring pushes it forwards to reset. Release the trigger, and it resets, ready to fire again. 
When out of ammo, the stop on empty system pushes up on the slide catch, and it locks back the slide. And now a rifle, and a fairly unconventional one at that. Trigger is pulled, hammer drops and pushes the valve knocker, gas is released into the nozzle and goes out the front to propel the BB, the rocket valve seals, pressure builds inside the nozzle, it pushes back the carrier, the carrier resets the hammer, which resets the valve knocker because this gun doesn't use a valve knocker lock, the carrier continues on inertia, the nozzle gets yanked out of the hop unit and retracts, the carrier hits the limit of its travel, and then the recoil spring pushes it forwards to reset. Release the trigger, and the hammer drops off the disconnector onto the trigger, and it's ready to fire again. When out of ammo, the stop on empty system pushes up on the bolt catch, and it locks back the bolt. And that's all there is to it. While most gas airsoft guns are actually more mechanically complicated than their real counterparts, once you wrap your head around the basic concept, it becomes pretty easy to open up a brand new airsoft gun and figure out how it works. And unlike real firearms, we don't have to worry about the intricacies of wildly different recoil systems, as almost all modern gas blowback guns are just variations on the same core system. In a future video, we'll go through some of the myths and misconceptions about this system, as well as common issues in troubleshooting. And if you're interested in how to maintain gas magazines or gas guns, we already have guides on those that we'll link in the description. For now, we hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.